Hello everyone and welcome to this mini lecture on subject versus theme versus commentary. And my purpose for creating this mini lecture is that students often are pretty comfortable with subject, pretty comfortable with theme, but then have trouble going from theme into commentary. And so this primer is a nice way of helping students take those steps, kind of be able to identify the theme or identify the subject, move into the theme, and then really talk about the commentary. Because again, theme and commentary is where we really get to start to talk about literature, whereas subject is more still looking at or thinking about plot. So when we talk about subject, what we're largely looking at is what the story is about. This is more of the literal, what is the story about, right? We're dealing with content, we're dealing with plot. When we get to theme, now we're getting what the story is really about. This is the man behind the curtain. This is the big idea that the story is giving us. We're not just talking about story anymore, we're not just talking about plot, but we're talking about that big idea. Right, that, that concept. And one thing to keep in mind is that with most literature, there's usually, or there can be more than one theme, and there often is. Uh, very few pieces of work I've looked at have just one singular theme. Good literature taps upon many different types of themes. That's what makes it good literature, that, that's what makes it allow to last uh, for as long as it does still in various literary canons. So then we have commentary. In commentary, is where students have a little bit of trouble making the leap. They get theme, or they're often able to say, hey, this theme is present in this story. But the next step is the commentary. And what I mean by commentary is, what is the author's take on that theme? That is, it's not enough to say, this story has this theme, but the student has to take the next step and say, this theme is to be understood in this way by this author. So what we, we're thinking about is what the author wants you to consider about that theme. And again, there can be numerous themes. So you might just want to you know, focus on one theme at a time and identify, okay, here's the theme and here's what the author thinks about this theme. Now, in order to get to where the author thinks about this theme, you need evidence. Right? This, is, this is what we consider the hard part. You need to make sure you get evidence to actually justify or to prove that this is the author's commentary. So I'm going to give you a few examples just for you to kind of start to work with and to think about. And the first example is The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. And the subject is a woman recovering from postpartum depression. The theme, the, treatments of, the treatment of women's health in a male-dominated society. Now that's what I'm identifying as one of the major themes of the yellow wallpaper. And the commentary is that women were not in control of their bodies. That is a, this judgment of women's health in a male-dominated society. Gilman is telling us in this world of men, male doctors, women did not control their bodies. And for my evidence, I have these, these two quotes or this one singular quote, quote, that's two paragraphs. If a physician of high standing in one, one's own husband assures friends and relatives that there's really nothing the matter with one but temporary nervous depression, a slight hysterical tendency, what is one to do? My brother is also a physician and also of high standing, and he says the same thing. So within this quote, this to me is evidence that the, the story the theme, the story's theme around treatment of women in a male-dominated society gives us this commentary that women are control, in control of their bodies. Here we have a woman who is basically not able to say anything about her state or her state, her view of her state is not taken seriously because a husband and a brother, both of which are doctors, say otherwise. So she has no power over her body and what she chooses to do with it. Example number two, number two comes from us comes to us from To Build a Fire by Jack London. And here a man must trek my, miles in the cold, uh, in extreme cold conditions, but is not prepared. So that is that is the subject, is you know, confronting the environment when not prepared. The theme, or one of the themes, is knowledge versus instinct. And the commentary that I would say around this is at times humans have forfeited their survival instinct for knowledge. That does, not, that does them no good when, it, when with nature. Right? So this is what I believe, or this is one of the themes that Jack London is tapping into, is this idea that you know, humans, we have all this knowledge and we have all this, this 
proper learning, but at times it displaces us when we are with nature. And the quote that I, I found to kind of to prove this or to reinforce this is um, this one here. 50 degrees below zero meant 80 odd degrees of frost. Such fact impressed him as being cold and uncomfortable, and that was all. The animal was depressed by the tremendous cold. It knew that it was no time for traveling. Its instincts told it a truer tale than was told to the man by the man's judgment. The dog did not know anything about thermometers. Possibly, in its brain, there was no sharp consciousness of a condition of very cold such as was in the man's brain. But the brute had its instincts. Had its instinct. So here we have this idea of the man has no the man has knowledge of what cold is like but he doesn't understand on an instinctual level and that is going to create a whole range of challenges so this is london's theme is you know what we know versus what is our instinct so example number 3 i want to know why by sherwood anderson and this is about a boy who witnesses his idol, which happens to be a jockey, show the same affection for a prostitute as he does his horse. So the theme is leaving childhood. That is, this boy who has this great love of, of horse racing and his idol is this, this great jockey, um, the boy realizes that the adult doesn't have the same kind of um, with, has the same kind of love and affection for horse racing but rather sees it as something um, lustful and he looks at both a horse and a prostitute with the same kind of lustful look and so when the boy sees this there's a part of him that is destroyed uh, there's a part of him that that starts to think adult thoughts and the commentary overall from uh, Anderson is that there's no return to childhood once you go down that path of adulthood. And so the, the evidence here is, but things are different. At the tracks, the air don't taste as good or smell as good. It's because a man like Jerry Tilford, who knows what he does, could see a horse like Sunstreak run and kiss a woman like that the same day. I can't make it out. Darn him, what did he want to do like that for? I keep thinking about it, and it spoils looking at horses. And so this would be my evidence, is that he, the boy's blind love for horses and racing and all of that has now been tainted by being exposed to some very adult themes and ideas. And so there's no returning. He can't find that love again for horses. All right, so again, that's, you know, th those are how, that is what we look at as we look at subject, theme, and commentary. So when we're looking at subject, we're looking at content. Theme is that big idea. Commentary is the author's point of view with evidence. So hopefully this will prove some, this will prove useful in helping you kind of make sense of literature or dive deeper into literature. All right, thank you very much.